Uh, my name is Christine Vashon, and I am here with Magic Magic and Kill Your Darlings. Well, I mean, selling a movie here, I actually haven't done it in a long time, but it is really not for the faint of heart. <laughs> Uh, you know, it's tough. It's like you have a lot, you know, it, obviously there's a lot at stake because you're hoping that the movie's going to meet expectations in terms of, you know, uh, financial sale. Um, but it's also, you know, every director who's here has really, you know, they all have their own, like, epic tale of, of you know, war and woe to tell about how they got here. Um, so you want it to be a great experience for them as well. I mean, one of the things that I've found about Sundance is that <clears throat> there's almost, no matter how out there a movie is, it almost always finds a fan somewhere, you know? So I think the, the experience, even though I know, you know, there's some movies that come here and just, you know, become audience favorites, I think every movie becomes somebody's favorite. Sundance has always been, uh, particularly critical for uh, American independent films. I mean, I guess I saw it evolve pretty shortly after I started coming, which was really like 20 years ago. In fact, the first year that Todd Haynes came with his short superstar, The Karen Carpenter Story, it was called the U.S. Film Festival. Mm -hmm. wow. And it wasn't in Park City. It was actually at Sundance. So that's a long time ago. Um, and I have seen it evolve pretty soon after that into a uh, place where films uh, uh, came to be bought and sold. Um, and obviously, look, there's, you know, you can walk up and down Main Street and hear plenty of people my age or older telling you how it used to be and, and it was so much better then. But I don't really feel that way. I think that there's, I think that as the festival's expanded, uh, there's so many more sections with so much, you know, a lot of rich material. Uh, I like that it's adapted with the times. These days, the distinctions between television and something made specifically for the web, for example, is really disappearing. And um, and I think I mentioned earlier my 13-year-old daughter really doesn't know the difference. I mean, she watches stuff on her computer, and that's, you know, it doesn't matter where it comes from to her. That said, one of the things I think it's made us as, as producers really have to look at is we have to really interrogate this whole notion of what makes something theatrical. What will make us venture into something uh, to make it specifically for a theatrical release? And that's a real question. What's going to make somebody decide that there's enough urgency that they're going to get up and go to the theater, pay that money, you know, pay the babysitter to see that movie instead of waiting until they can have it in their living room? I have always wanted to make movies that tell great stories. Obviously, some of them uh, have queer content. Some of them don't. Um, I used to get criticized a lot as a young producer for not doing more. Um, but I've really made my peace with the fact that, you know, um, I'm not probably going to be the one who ever does, like, the coming out story. Um, usually, you know, uh, if I... I'm usually attracted to the dark side. I've gotten accused a lot of making queer movies that haven't helped the cause. And I'm kind of all for that, because I don't know if it's my cause. Um, you know, I, I was approached uh, a few years ago to join the Guild, and it was right around the time that there was a lot of controversy about credits. There was sort of a split, and the PGA was making an attempt then to reach out to independent producers but, you know, the whole notion of, at first it became about, like, it was about, like, who do you give a credit to? And I kept saying, from my point of view, as an independent producer, if somebody comes to me and says, here's 50% of your budget, but I want to have a producer credit with you, my answer is always going to be, okay. You know? And it's just, I don't have the luxury of, um, of deny, you know, of denying somebody that. When the, the argument then switched round over to what do people, you know, who really earned the credit, then I, I thought that was a, you know, an argument that made sense and that I'm very grateful for.